فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى the topic that we're going to be speaking about today is the role that the youths play in uh, the upbringing of the society the role that the youth play in the building of the society first of all we have to realize that being a shabab being a youth is a blessing it's a ni'mah min Allah tabarak wa ta'ala it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's marhalatul quwwah shabab being a youth is the stage where you have strength quwwah is there and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min dha'f Allah created you from weakness when a child is born he's what he's weak thumma ja'ala min ba'di dha'f quwwah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that weakness he gave you strength this is marhalatu shabab that stage of being a youth ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا and then after that strength which is being a youth you go you become what you become old again and you become weak وشيبة أن a person ages يخلق الله ما يشاء Allah creates what he wishes سبحانه وتعالى وهو العلي القدير وهو العليم القدير the ayahs in surah al rum ayah 54 so this ayah what it illustrates for us this ayah which is in Surah Al-Rum, ayah 54, what it illustrates for us or it gives us an understanding of that the shabab being a youth is marhalatul quwwah. Allah referred to it as, صح? That stage where strength is there. We all started from being a what? A nutfa. That's what we were. And then that nutfa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made it into a human being that you see. You went through weakness, a baby, a child, running around, toddler. And then you became a youth. You started to gain a bit of strength. This is a blessing. The ayah is saying all of this because Allah is trying to tell you what he has bestowed upon you. The blessings that he has given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marhalatul shabab, being a youth is marhalatul quwwah, is when strength is there. And also al-afiyah. Generally the person when they are in marhalatul shabab, they are healthy. Health-wise, they are also good. And the Qur'an and the sunnah all show that. وَلِذَلِكَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose Talut as a king. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose Talut. Talut to be the king. And he sent him out as a king over Banu Israel. At the time of Nabi Lahi Dawood, the people said that Talut is not unique from us. He has nothing special over us. There's nothing about him for him to be chosen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Inna Allah hashtafahum. Allah chose him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alaykum over you. Allah chose Talut over you. Wazadahu bastatan fil ilmi wal jismi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he opened for him. He gave him vast knowledge and Allah physically made Talut a strong individual. The strength here signifies that he was a youth. He was one who had ilm, Talut, and he also had he also had strength, quwa. And that's why he was chosen over all of Bani Israel. You're all aware of been to Shu'aib, the daughter of Shu'aib, according to what some people say, that man was Shu'aib. But the strongest opinion is what? That this man was not Shu'aib. It was not Nabi Lahi Shu'aib. The girl 
who Musa, the two girls, one of them, what did she say about Nabi Allah Musa when she wanted her father to employ him? She gave characteristics about Nabi Allah Musa. What did she say? Ya abati sta'jirhu. Oh my father, employ Nabi Allah Musa. Inna khayra man sta'jarta. The best person to employ is al qawiyul amin. It is the one who is strong and the one who is truthful and reliable. And these are the two characteristics that a woman should marry a man for. Al Qawi is strong, mentally strong, and he's physically strong. Al Amin and he's a reliable person, a trustworthy person. These are two characteristics that a person chooses a person for a marriage. And that's why she was married off to Nabiullah Musa. So Al Qawi is the significance of what? Marhalatu? Shabab. This person is a youth. And Musa was young. Nabi Allah Musa was, he was young. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, hadith, that the hadith that Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, من حديث ابن عباس نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس two blessings the people are heedless about it and they don't take they don't value it and benefit from it many of the people الصحة والفراغ it is health and it's also free time Allah blesses the person with these blessings and you find a person he has Asihatu is healthy and it's faraq. These two generally are mainly found in a shab, a youth. The youth is generally healthy. It doesn't have many illnesses. When you reach an old age, you start becoming sick a lot. And free time is generally with a youth. Then a person who is what? Elderly in age. So if Allah blessed you with these two blessings, and then you find that individual لا يجتهد في العبادة he doesn't give efforts and hard work towards عبادة ولا في الطاعة and he doesn't give importance to obedience of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ولا في أداء أعمال الصالحات and he's not also given importance to what coming with righteous actions and the the health keeps coming back for him الحمد لله is healthy every single day and also he has free time there's going to come a day when all of that will be taken from you. Al-Imam al-Muslim narrated in the Sahih from Hadith Abi Hurairah that the Prophet told us Al-Mu'min al-Qawiyu, the strong believer Khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if that the healthy believer the believer who's healthy is more beloved to Allah sorry, the strong, the strong believer the strong believer is greater and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pay attention. Al-Mu'min al-Qawi, the strong believer. Khayrun is better. Wa-ahabbu is more beloved to ilallahi to Allah min al-Mu'min al-Da'if than the what? The weak believer. Wa fi kullin khayr. But all of them, they have khayr in it. They all have, they all have khayr in them. But the one that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? What is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mu'min al-qawi, the believer who is strong. But all of them have good in them. What does it mean that the believer who is strong? It means the believer who is physically and mentally strong. He's physically strong because of the fact that he can support Islam physically. And he's also mentally and religiously he's strong. His Iman is strong. Both of them, it falls under the word Al-Qawi. Generally, generally, those two are found also more in the Shaab, but the youth. Then the Prophet said, Ihris, strive. Ala ma yanfa'uka, that which will benefit you. 
واستعن بالله seek help in Allah ولا تعجز and also don't what and also don't become one who gives up those three points that the prophet mentioned is the actual key to success people who study personal development who listen to these uh, speakers all it really is a success is what ihris ala ma yanfa'uk strive to what benefits you wasta'in billahi seek help and aid from allah wala ta'ajaz and don't give up and and become tired of it those three allah mentioned it subhanahu wa ta'ala after what after he mentioned al mu'min al qawi khayr wa ahabbu ila allah min al mu'min al dha'if wa fi kulli khayr after the prophet mentioned that the strong believer is more beloved to allah and is greater than the weak believer even though they're both good but this one is more beloved and is greater and then the prophet said come with these three it means that these three are found in the mu'min al qawi the believer who is strong he carries these three he strives to what benefits him he seeks help from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he also doesn't give up that's the quwwah that the hadith is referring to then the prophet said wa in asabaka shay'un if something afflicts you fala taqul don't say law anni fa'altu kada wa kada lakana kada wa kada don't if something afflicts you a calamity befalls you something happens to you don't say if i did this 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 then this 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 would have happened but say walakin qul qaddara allah but say allah willed wa ma sha'a fa'ala whatever he wills will happen fa inna law because the word law taftah it opens amal ash-shaytani the doings of shaytan it opens evil doors for you so don't say if only i did this or oh, if only i did accept it now it's happened there's nothing you can do about it so when many scholars explain this hadith like al imam an-nawawi rahimahullah and others they mention that that the shahid that the prophet is mentioned in this hadith is of course quwwatul qalbi quwwatul ruh azimatul nafs it is the strength of the heart and the strength of the person's spirituality and of course azimatul nafs the dedication and the drive and the motivation that a person has this is the quwwah that they all mention and that's why uh, many of them they leave the word quwwah here unrestricted some people they try to restrict it only to iman even though the iman is the number one but because the prophet left it unrestrictedly and he said al mu'min al qawi that the strong believer is greater and more beloved to allah then we leave it unrestricted so we say qawi fi badanihi he is strong in his physical qawi fi imani and he is also strong in his what iman qawi fi sihati he is also strong in his health qawi fi yaqini he is also strong in his certainty all of that it encompasses since allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave us strength and we've come to know that now when we're young when we're youths and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gave, given us health and free time then what is upon us is to benefit from them it is upon us to benefit from that opportunity shabab is an opportunity that all of the good that the nusus are met the nusus are mentioning are in it there's nothing else except for you to benefit from it so we say fahris ayyuh ash-shab o young youth benefit ala awqatika your time wa sa'atika every second that goes by in your time don't forsake it without no purpose behind it at place for your t- t- yourself a portion of good that you're going to do every now and then the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam ightanim khamsan qabla khams benefit from five before five come to you hayataka your life qabla mawtika before death comes to you wa sihataka benefit from your health qabla saqamika 
benefit from your health before you become ill. وَفَرَاغَكَ Benefit from your free time. قَبْلَ شُولِكَ Before you become preoccupied. وَشَبَابَكَ And then benefit from that age when you're a youth. قَبْلَ هَرَمِكَ Before you age. وَغِلَاكَ Benefit from the time that you have the money. قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ Before you become poor. أَخْرَجَهُ الْحَاكِمُ وَصَحَحَهُ الْإِمَامُ الْأَلْبَانِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ Also Ibn Abi Dunya, he brought it in his kitab, قَصْرُ الْأَمَلِ بَيْهَقِي شُعَبِ الْإِيمَانِ And all of it is narrated from the companion Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه عنهما The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told us when he was asked about أَيُّ النَّاسِ خَيْرٌ Who is the best of people? The Prophet was asked, who is the best of people? And then the Prophet said, مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ Anyone whose life is long, وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ And he perfects his what? His actions. The best of people is مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ The person whose lifespan is lengthened. وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ And his actions are good. That's the best of people. فَأَيُّ النَّاسِ شَرٌ Who is the worst of people? The Prophet said, مَنْ طَالَ عُمُرُهُ The one whose life is lengthened, but وَسَاءَ عَمَلُهُ And his actions are evil. Tirmidhi narrated it, Shaykh Al-Bari authenticated it. So you can see that if a person lives for a very long time, and they don't, and they don't age, as well, they age, sorry, they become long, it's better, and they spend all of that time with obedience of Allah and righteous deeds, it's better than having a short lifespan where you do good deeds, but it's short. What is better is to have what? A longer lifespan where you do righteous deeds. When people make dua for you and they say to you, Allah umraka, may Allah lengthen your life, it's not praiseworthy because it could be one of the two. What do you say? May Allah lengthen your life on his obedience. That's important. Because it's not beneficial if my life is long and I come with evil deeds. Are we all together? And the Prophet used to seek refuge from Allah. Then what? To reach an age where the person becomes a burden on his loved ones. He used to seek refuge. where the person, he, You don't know what you're doing. Here, inshallah ta'ala, some advices. Now that we've understood some things that a youth, inshallah ta'ala, advices that he needs to come with. My beloved brothers and sisters, our youth, us youths, yajibu alayna, it's obligatory on us to come with sincerity in our intentions. What we're doing, we need to be sincere. And we have to be truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in when we're directing ourselves to him. When we're doing something, we direct ourselves to him alone and we do it for him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay away from showing off. Stay away from making somebody else see your righteous deeds or hear of it. Because these are the things that destroy a person's actions. It nullifies it. Hide your sin, hide your deeds. The way you love your sins to be hidden for you or even greater. Make righteous deeds for yourself that no one else knows about it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep it between you and Allah. Righteous deeds that you do that are only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it be voluntary prayers that you pray, whether it be crying in the darkness, whether it be uh, supplicating and begging him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he only accepts from those who are ahlu taqwa. As he said in the Quran, قَالْ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Verily, the ones who Allah accepts from them is those who are pious. A person of taqwa is a person who's mastered their intentions. O oh, youngsters, brothers and sisters, don't be from those people who refuse themselves from entering Jannah. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said to us in the hadith, all of my ummah will enter Jannah except the one who refuses. And the companions, they said, Who is the one who's going to refuse to enter Jannah? And then the Prophet said, Man ata'ani dakhala al-Jannah. 
the one who obeys me will enter Jannah. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى And the one who disobeys me, then he is the one who refused himself from entering Jannah. Bukhari narrated this in his Sahih bin Hadith Abi Hurairah. Exercise yourself. Nurture yourself upon every moment that you get in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make your tongue consistent on the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that you safeguard your ad'iyah, your daily dua, whether it be dua is sabah or masa. Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, those of you who believe, udhkuru Allah dhikran kathira, remember Allah a lot, wa sabbihuhu, exalt him subhanahu wa ta'ala, bukratan wa asila, in the morning, in the evening, and every moment that you get, exalt him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah also said, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Those who remember Allah a lot with males, وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ And the female who remember Allah a lot, أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ Allah has prepared for them مَغْفِرَةً forgiveness وَأَجَرًا عَظِيمًا And great reward Allah has prepared for those men who sit down and remember Allah and those women who sit down and remember Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them forgiveness and he's also prepared for them a great reward. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Prophet was one who يذكر الله على كل أحيانه the Prophet would remember Allah in all of his situations whether he's walking, whether he's sitting, whether he's lying down he would remember Allah in all of his situations عليه الصلاة والسلام Al-Imam al-Muslim narrated that and also it's narrated from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as is Sahih Muslim that the Prophet said سبق المفردون the Mufarridun, they have surpassed us. They've passed. Qalu, they said, وَمَا الْمُفَرِّدُونَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Who are the Mufarridun, or Messenger of Allah? And then he said, أَذَّاكِرُونَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ It is the men who remember Allah, and it is the women who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the greatest things to remember Allah through subhanahu wa ta'ala and the soul of a believer would find comfort and joy in, and it brings tranquility to the heart, is recitation of the Qur'an. It is to read the Qur'an. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man qara'a harfan, anyone who reads a letter, min kitabillahi, from the book of Allah, falahu bihi hasanah, he would attain from it reward, hasana, good deeds. Wal hasanatu bi ashri amtaliha, and that deed is going to be multiplied by 10. And then the Prophet said, La aqulu, I will not say. Alif, la, mim is a harf. I will not say alif, la, mim is a harf, is one letter. Rather, alifun, harfun, alif is a harf. Wa lamun, harfun, and lam is a harf. Wa mimun, harfun, and the letter mim is also a harf. Tirmidhi narrated this and he authenticated it as well. And so did Sheikh Al Albani, rahimahullah, in his kitab. Sahih al-Targhib wa al-Targhib and also in his Sursila Hadith al-Sahiha. Abi Ubamat al-Bahili radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I heard the Prophet of Allah say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, iqra'u al-Qur'ana, recite and read the Qur'an, fa'innahu ya'ti, the Qur'an will come, yawm al-Qiyamati, the day of judgment, shafi'an li ashabihi, an intercession to the people who read it. The Prophet said, iqra'u al-Qur'ana, read the Qur'an, فَإِنَّهُ For verily the Qur'an will come the day of judgment شَفِيعًا an intercession لِأَصْحَابِهِ to the people who used to read it. And Imam Muslim narrated this in his, in his Sahih. So it's upon the young youth to benefit from his time in seeking knowledge. To seek knowledge. The knowledge which the pious predecessors sought and those who followed them in good. And wallahi, there is no other success except in taking the Qur'an on and taking the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For verily they are ma'dalu al-ilmi wa aslu. The asal of knowledge and the foundation of it is the kitab and the sunnah. And anybody who leaves those two, the kitab and the sunnah, and turns away from it and turns his back, dalla dalala ba'idah. That person has truly become misguided, a clear-cut misguidance. Seek knowledge. Al Imam Hafid al Hakami, rahimahullah, he says in his kitab, Mandumatul Mimiya, Fil Wasaya, Wal Adab al Ilbiya. He says, Al Ilmu Ashrafu Batlubin, knowledge is the most honorable thing a person can attain. 
لله فالله أكرم من يمشي على قدمي وطالبه the one who seeking it for the sake of Allah is أكرم من يمشي is the greatest person who walks on this earth العلم نور knowledge is light مبين it is clear light يستضيء به it is used as a light is shun as a light by who به أهل السعادة the people of happiness والجهال في الظلم and the dark and the ignorant ones are in darkness the people of happiness أهل السعادة people of Jannah أهل السعادة here means the people of Jannah who are happy are the ones who knowledge it shines everything for them they're in light as for the ignorant ones they are in darknesses العلم أعلى knowledge is the greatest وأحلى and it's the sweetest ما له استبعت that which a person listens to and hears أذر with his ears وأعرب عنه ناطق بفمي and also a, anything a person expresses his, with his tongue and he says with his mouth the best thing is knowledge and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us in the hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asim told us that ignorance and the people of ignorance are the cause for misguidance and the misguiding of others the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna allaha la yaqbidu al-ilma intiza'an yantazi'uhu min al-nazi Allah does not take knowledge and take it from the people one time ولكن يقبض العلم but the way Allah takes knowledge is بقبض العلماء by taking the people of knowledge حتى إذا لم يبقى عالما until there is no scholar left اتخذ الناس رؤوسا جهالا then the people take the ignorant ones as their leaders فسؤلوا and they start to ask them فأفتوا these ignorant ones start to answer the questions بغير علم with no knowledge فضلوا they misguide وأضلوا and they misguide فضلوا they misguide themselves وأضلوا they misguide others so what does this hadith show us that knowledge and the people of knowledge are the reason for guidance. That's what this hadith teaches us in its mafoom. This is the mafoom of the hadith. Since the people of ignorance, and ignorance is the cause of misguidance, their knowledge and the people of knowledge are what? They are the cause of what? Guidance. They are the, co- the cause of what? Al-hidayat wal They are the cause from, for one to be guided himself, and for him to guide others, it's only going to happen through what? Through knowledge. So that's why one needs to perfect his intention in seeking knowledge. And he needs to also perfect his intention in defending the Sharia, in defending the Sharia. Walidalika Ibn Abdul Bar, Rahimahullah, in his Jami' Bayan al Ilmi wa Fadli, when he brought some of the lines of the scholars who praise knowledge, he brought uh, two lines of poetry regarding uh, it. He says, وَبِدَادُ مَا تَجْرِي بِهِ أَقَلَامُهُمْ أَزْكَى وَأَفْضَلُ مِنْ دَمِ الشُّهَدَاءِ That the scholars, the ink that comes from their pen which they use is more purified and it's more virtuous than the blood of a martyr. يَا طَالِبِ عِلْمِ النَّبِيِّ مُحَمَّدٍ O seeker of the knowledge of Nabi Allah Muhammad مَا أَنْتُمْ وَسِوَاكُمْ بِسَوَائِلٍ you and them are not the same. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in a famous hadith that when he sent the noble companion Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said to him, فَوَاللَّهِ by Allah, لَا يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا, واحدا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النِّعَمِ For Allah to guide one person on your hand is better for you than a red camel. وَلِذَلِكَ حَسَنَ الْبَصْرِيُّ He said, فَمَقَامُ الدَّعْوَةِ The station of calling the people to Allah إِلَى اللَّهِ فَمَقَامُ الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَفْضَلُ مَقَامَاتِ الْعَبْدِ The station of calling the people to Allah is the greatest station to ever attain for a slave. The call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is the greatest station a slave can attain. He said, O oh my beloved brothers and sisters, youth, Ihris strive hard and give so much importance to staying away from wasting your time in sins and things that are going to destroy you. Al Imam ibn al Qayyim he said, Wabil Jumlati in conclusion, Fa in al Abda if the slave Ida Arada Adillah if he turns away from Allah, Washtagala Bil Baasi and he preoccupies himself with sins, Baat Alihi Ayyamu Hayati al Hakiya. The true essence of your day will go. 
التي يجد غب إضاعتها يوم يقول ضاعت عليه أيام حياتي if a person turns away from Allah and he preoccupies himself with sins ضاعت عليه it will be forsaken or he will forsake عليه أيام حياته the days of his life the true days of your life are going to go and then you're going to التي يجد غب إضاعتها and then you're going to find the day of judgment pain and agony due to the faith, due to the reason that you forsaked it and then the person is going to say يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي يا ليتني destruction be for me what is it that I put forward for my life he calls it hayati my life because the true essence of life is that which is done in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is what is done so how can a person stay away from that فحضر مجالس الفارغين stay away from those people who have no important things in their lives وحفظ لسانك protect your tongue Make sure that your statements are only in something that's going to bring a khair for you or deflect from you a harm. And know, keep in mind, every day which you live, every moment that you are given, فَهُوَ غَنِيمَةٌ It's a ghanima. It's a ghanima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Another thing I wanted to urge the youths, and the young brothers and sisters that the person works a youth benefits from his time in not being lazy also working وَلِذَلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he urges in his book that the person goes and works and looks for rizq but the person looks for his rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anatin with tranquility مَعَ sabri with patience قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah says in the Qur'an فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ If the salah is established and it's prayed فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Spread on this earth وَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And look for the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Here Allah is telling us When you pray the salah to Jum'ah فَتَفَرَّقُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go and disperse onto the earth وَآيْ لِلْتِجَارَةِ So businesses and work To fulfill your needs and the needs of your family to attain your worldly gain to look for your rizq but then what? to be patient and Allah wa ta'ala He says وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا but remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot you're working, you're doing your, your, your rizq and you're making your money but your tongue is still in the remembrance of who? it is in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also Allah says in Surah Al-Mulk Allah says هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ Allah is the one who has made for you الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا Allah has made this earth ذَلِيل for you it's, it's, it's spread for you, it's weak for you, it services you this earth is being made to, to, serve, to serve you Allah says فَمْشُوا فِي مَلَاكِبِهَا Walk on this earth, spread on this earth, strive on this earth and what did Allah say? وَكُلُوا بِالْرِسْقِ Look for your risk from it وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ and from this earth, you will be taken out. So Allah made this earth what? Dalulan, a munqadatan, sahlatan, mutawwa'atan. It's in obedience to you. It's the earth is made, it won't complain about your running on it. It won't complain on your driving on it. It's dalulan. Allah made it for you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us to place rizq. And the fuqaha and the scholars, they differed. What's the asal of rizq? What's the best? Is it being a shepherd? Is it being an agriculturist uh, who plants the seeds? What is it? So the scholars, they differ on it. But this is something else, inshallah ta'ala, when we speak about ahkab al-kasfi, the Islamic ahkab rulings pertaining to earnings, we'll speak about it there, inshallah ta'ala. Allah also says, وَبْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ وَبْتَغِ Look for فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ In that which Allah has given you, الدار الآخرة What Allah has given you Look for it for the hereafter The things Allah has given you 
make it a means for your hereafter. وَلَا تَنْصَ لَصِيبَكَ And do not forget your portion of this dunya. Don't be heedless of your dunya. Remember your dunya as well. Allah is telling you this. وَلَا تَنْصَ لَصِيبَكَ وَلَا تَنْسَ Do not forget نَصِيبَكَ Your portion. Of what? Min dunya this world. Don't just say, I'm going to be in a masjid and pray 24-7. Allah doesn't want that from you. He's telling you after he told you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ That work, whatever Allah has given you, work for your hereafter, strive for your hereafter, then Allah says to you, وَلَا تَنْصَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget your worldly gain. The person, the believer, he earns and works. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكِ So we're told here, أُطْلُ فِي تَصَرُّفِكَ فِي مَا أَعْطَاكَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ الْكَثِيرَةِ Look for the blessings Allah has given you. Some of the scholars, they did say like it, وَلَا تَنْصَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا What does it mean? What does it mean? It means don't forget your shroud. Because that's your portion of this world. That's what you really own. That you take with you to your grave. Some of the scholars, that's what they said. Also, the person does not let the world become the primary aim. That happens to many people. That they tend to start looking for risk with the good intention that they have. They have good intention. They think, okay, mashallah, I have to provide for myself or my family. But what does it sometimes do to the person? It makes them forget the primary reason of why they were created for. What's the asal that we were brought this, into this, to this world for? Ibadatullah wahada. The reason why we're actually working, it should serve what? What does it need to serve? It needs to serve our ibadah. Not that the ibadah serves the, our work. So then you see those people who haven't understood the aim why, they, the, why, the aim why they are in this earth. What do they do? They start throwing all of the salah to what? To one side. And so they pray all the daily prayers when? At night when he comes, do, 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 all of it. Or he'll say to you, I have a question. Okay, what's the question? Well, I, I can struggle. I can't pray Dhuhr in my workplace because they won't let me. The first question is, which is the asal, both of them? The asal is what? You need to pray. This is the asal. This is why you're in this world. This is something you have to do. Your work has to work around your ibadah. It needs to serve. The reason why you're waking up is so you can eat to worship Allah. That's how it is. So there's an incorrect understanding of the concept of... Uh, work and what people understood from it. This is very vital that a person understands that. Allah emphasized that on the Quran. Look what he says to the people of Thamud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, Wa ila Thamud akhahum salihan. Qala ya qawm ibudullaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayru huwa insha'akum min al-ardi wa sta'marakum fiha fastaghfiruhu thumma tubu ilayh inna rabbi qareebun mujib. Allah says, وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ The people of Thamud. Allah sent them the what? Their brother are Salih. أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا Nabi Allah Salih was sent to them. He said, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ My people, اُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاشِبَ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ You do not have مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ You have no other ilah other than Allah. هُوَ أَنْشَأَكُمْ Allah is the one who brought you, established you, made you مِنْ الْأَرْضِ from this earth. وَاسْتَعْبَرَكُمْ And he made you what? Uh, be the inhabitants of this earth, reside in this earth. Ta'mir here, it means that the bina, you are the ones who are building it and establishing this earth. He made you one who is like that. فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ But look, ask him for forgiveness. ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِمْ And then what? Repent to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ رَبِّي verily my Lord is what? قَرِيبُ mujib. My Lord is one who is close and he accepts this begging and the supplication of what? My slave. Allah also says, Allah is the one who created the Samawat. Allah created the Ard. Allah sent from the sky ma and water. And then Allah brought crops out from the earth. Pay attention to this ayah. The rain comes down, it brings crops out of the earth. Allah has made also for you what? الفلك لتجري في البحر بأمري. He has also made the boats sail on the shore with his command. وسخر لكم الأنهار 
and he also made the rivers and the seas also become something that works for you. وَسَخَرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ دَائِبَيْنِ وَسَخَرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا Allah here tells us, He also has made what? The sun, the moon, all of them what? Just working in their courses. And He also made for you the day and the night. All of that He made for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did He make all of that? He made all of that so we worship Him. Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explains it more. What did he say? Ya ayyuhal nasu ubudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablukum la'allakum tattaqun alladhi ja'ala lakum al-arda firashan wa samaa binaan wa anzala min al-samaa imaan fa akhraja bihi min al-thamarati rizqan lakum fala taj'alu lillahi andada wa antum ta'alamun After he mentions all of those rizq and that income, he reminds you beginning of the ayah and the ending of the ayah, both of them ibadah. So what does that show us? That the job and the money that we're trying to bring has to work around it. Look at it, at the beginning and at the end, both of them, Tawheed is being told to you. Ya ayyuhal nasu ubudu. This is the first command, by the way, in the Quran. If you open the Quran and you look at it from Surah Al-Fatiha, the first place where you're commanded, the first place in the Quran that you're commanded, is where? I'm talking about the way that the Quran is, the sequence and the verses, the way they are. You start from Fatiha, you go through Baqarah, and then what's the first command that you come to? Ubudu rabbakum. Worship your Lord. يَا أَيُّ النَّاسُ عُبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً All of this, he made this earth like this for you. So you can plant your seeds in there and make rizq from it. And he also sends the sky, rain for you. Then he says to you, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَدَّادًا Allah says to you, Allah says to you, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَدَّادًا Do not make with Allah anything equal to it. So the beginning of the ayah was telling you to worship him alone and the ending of the ayah is also telling him don't associate partners with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. In between that, your dunya is being spoken about. What does that show you? That what comes first and what comes last is what? Ibadatullahi wahda. Your work needs to serve that purpose. So the youth, we urge them to work. We push them. We say you should work. And so does the sharia. The sharia pushes that the person works and comes with what? Well, Islam is the religion that talks about making money. It's sad that when a person starts practicing, they forget the concept of making money. They think, I'm practicing, I can't, I don't, I can't work. And this goes against what Islam is re- re- speaking about. And it goes against what the religion is talking about. Well, look at the hadith of Anas ibn Malikin, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, that the Prophet said, Tayalisi narrated this in his Musnad, Ahmad in his Musnad as well, Abdi, Abdi, Abdi ibn Humaydin in his Muntakhab in Musnadi, Bukhari in Adam al-Mufrad, Bazzar if he Musnadi, that the Prophet said, In qamati sa'ah, if the hour comes, wa fi yadi ahadikum fasilatan, wa fi ahadikum fasilatun, if the hour comes and one of you has a twig in his hand, fa in istata'a ala taquba, if he's able to stand, until he plants it, then he should try to plant it. <coughs> Pay attention to that. If the hour comes, Qiyamah happens, don't throw that, that seed, that plant that you have in your hand. You got a little plant in your hand? Do not let it what? If you're able to, plant it. This shows what? The word Fasila is, is, is a Nakhla Sagheera, it's a small tree. Right? It's a small tree. The Prophet is telling us, if you're able, if you're able to stand and, play, and plant it, then do it. If you're not, then you're not able to. And what does this show? This hadith showed at al Azim, how important it is to give importance to zara, planting. This is what? It's, it's, it's about the importance of a ta'mir flower. And the opposite is the truth. Islam is against destroying the earth. When the Prophet went to battles, he said, don't kill women, no children, and don't destroy plants. Don't destroy the plants. and the, Don't do that. The earth is made to bring... The earth is not meant to be destroyed. Who is the first who came with the concept of looking after the environment? Islam. And the rights of the animals. Huh? What did the Prophet say? That when you slaughter in the animals, there's etiquettes that are mentioned. 
And Imam al-Sakhawi, he wrote a book on the rights of animals. The student of Ibn Hajar. He has a book written on the rights of the animals. Are we all together? The environment, the Quran and the Sunnah has written about it. And it also warned against the opposite. It's not Islam that created nuclear bombs. It wasn't the Muslims. Science that they used to make nuclear bombs. We need to look at what the Sharia believe about nuclear bombs. And what's the ruling pertaining to it? Sahih. Because it's something that destroys what? The earth. <coughs> destroys the earth even after the battle is over. The earth is destroyed. And it's still the chemicals that come out of it is what? For very, very long lasting. Are we all together? Scholars they wrote books on this, the ruling of nuclear bombs and the hakams pertaining to it. So they're the ones who say environmental, but they're the ones who bring things that bring problems to the environment. Islam is a religion that when it warns against something, it also warns against anything that might lead to it. Look what Allah said about those who bring harm and corruption to the earth. Allah says, إِنَّمَا جَزَاءُ الَّذِينَ يُحَارِمُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَسْعَوْنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادًا أَنْ يُقَتَّلُوا أَوْ يُصَلَّبُوا أَوْ تُقَطَّعَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُ مِنْ خِلَافٍ أَوْ يُوفَوْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ ذَلِكَ لَهُمْ خِزْيٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَقْدِرُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah talks, talks, talks to us about al-muharibun, those who do hiraba, which is that they're highway robbers. They bring fear to the people. They stand on the road and they rob the people. They kill them, they take their money and they leave the people behind with nothing. And Allah mentions, what did he say? وَيَسْعَوْنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادًا And they are striving to bring about corruption to this earth. Those people are fought against. They are killed. Their arms and their legs are cut. It's for it to be a lesson for the rest not to bring this kind of harm. But then Allah says, if they repent before you grab them and they come back to their senses, then they are what? Then they are forgiven. Before they're grabbed, if they repent and they stop and they hold back, then they are what? Then they are forgiven. Islam opens the door of repentance. The door of repentance. In this country, if you steal something and then you repent and you go to the government, I stole but I, I'm repenting now. Would they accept it? Very accepted. So that's inshallah ta'ala the role that a youth needs to play in the building of the communities. There is inshallah ta'ala another part of the topic which is in Hiraf al Shabab, Al Waqi' wal Ilaj. The deviation that occurs to the youth that comes to him, the reality of it and the cure for it. I'll inshallah ta'ala conclude that in the name of Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka tu ilayk.